Hello everyone and welcome to Snug Park for the big game in the STJFL Barwix under 13 between Channel and the Clarence Roos. It is Andrew Silver Fox Hopwood and uh, I am in the commentary tower and I'm very, very pleased to say I'm joined by Brad Sculthorpe. Brad, uh, we are looking forward to a very, very big night of football down here at Snug Park. Yeah, it should be a cracker, Hoppy. Yes, well, I noticed that there are plenty of people coming around. There are kids everywhere. It is a real carnival atmosphere here, Brad. Yes, certainly is, Hoppy. Uh, yeah, the plenty of kids about. There's another game to follow. So, yeah, kids, lots of them. Well, I've just been also inside the club rooms adorning the... Uh, the life members and all the great luminaries of this fantastic football club down here at Channel. Just tell me a little bit about the, the plans that uh, go forward, Brad, because uh, it seemed a bit of a buzz in there tonight. Yeah, no, certainly, mate. Uh, the locals love to get back down here and watch a little bit of uh, the, the local footy. Unfortunately, these days it's only youth football that yes. we, uh, we get to watch, but everyone's about. Now that uh, there's a few changes in the midst with the AFL team, um, yeah, sky's the limit, mate. We just keep turning up, giving the kids somewhere to play football, and they keep turning up doing it. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, well, look, there is the runner, Calvin Keane. Uh, just a bit of short of a bit of a the gallop, man, I would suggest. The man, the myth. The man, the myth. That reminds me of uh, Mick Nolan, the galloping gasometer for North Melbourne. That might be before your time. I don't know if you remember the great man. Just a tad hoppy. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm only a baby, mate. <laughs> you are only a baby. So here are some of the Saints going around. And, of course, the visitors come down uh, from Clarence. Uh, they are the under-13 coached by Clint Cornish. Uh, Clarence uh, are going very nicely through the ranks. And one of the things we've noticed uh, over there, Brad, just like down here, we're seeing a lot of um, players come in who are, if you like, sons of some former greats. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, Clarence has certainly got a, a lot of names to call on. Um, we've got a couple ourselves mm. in the ranks in this team. So, yeah. Um, good to see that uh, kids are following through in, in dad's footsteps or um, which may even soon to be mum's footsteps. Well, that's the, that's the great thing, isn't it? It's been a wonderful transition in footy. It was a male-dominated sport, but now I think it's a fantastic thing that uh, it doesn't matter your gender. You can follow your passion and your dreams to get to either the AFL or the AFLW. And I tell you what, there's one place. So as soon as this under-13 go game finishes, Brad, I'll be scooting straight over there for a chicken burger. Don't you worry about that. Mate, you'd want to be quick because I'll be right behind you. <laughs> well, we might just go over three-quarter time, just get the order in. But we're really looking forward uh, to this match. Of course, the captain is uh, Declan Brett. He loves the midfield. He's played 67 games with the club. Sadly, he follows Collingwood. That said, they are playing a very good brand of footy. Oh, yes, so they are. We, we look forward to see how he goes round as the ball is thrown aloft. And there is uh, Declan gets the big fist to it, trying to follow that up. Well played by him. That was, sorry, Jaden King in the ruck as the umpire comes in. And quite rightly there, pays the free kick. I don't mind that when you see the person get their head over the onion is uh, played the rewards. Back through the centre of the ground. Ball in dispute. Now it comes out wide. There is Brett, the skipper. Now he gets a handle on it, trying to barge his way through. Took on a little bit too much. Well played by Pickett to try and stop him. Goes deep in there. And that big kick, looking for the forward in Skullthorpe. But it comes undone, and Clarence will repel that attack. It was interesting to see there, Brad, that uh, they were very direct. Do you think that's something the coach has said, to be nice and direct on the big oval? Yeah, definitely, Hoppy. There's, uh, yeah... You can certainly they're, they're, get lost, they're, they're can't you? They're definitely growing boys, but uh, those wings are pretty wide when you're only uh, kicking 30, 35. Yep. Some of these kids are out to 40 metres, but, um, yeah, it's a long way back in. It's a very big ground, I must admit. I, I, was, I had a good walk around, and uh, earlier on, I, I don't mind a run. I bought the sneakers down, had a bit of a canter. I, I paced it out uh, for my timing. It's about 440 metres around, so I reckon it's a fair, it's a fair uh, dash. It's a good-size oval. As that ball comes in, oh, that's a good mark going back by Sampson. He had no idea who was coming the other way. He showed a lot of courage for, him, uh, for his team. Goes in, comes across out the back. Some tight checking there. Good tackle. 
pressure being applied. It's a good kick there by Walter. Goes back in. Doing a good job now, the Saints, if they can just get that handball. Keeping it close to the line. Clarence again at the bottom of that pack there was Klein. Klein can't bring that one. The umpire says it's going to be a ball up. So the question was asked of the defence there for Channel, and they answered it very, very nicely there. Can they hold on? Good throw up. Goes close towards that boundary line. Murray, head over it. Big, strong tackle. And again, the ball up. This is good defensive uh, skills here by Channel Brad at the moment. Holding on. Yeah, yeah, no, the midfield's pushed down and give, give the backs a hand, which is great to see. Yeah, that's the interesting thing with uh, modern footy nowadays. Your midfielder just doesn't hang around that middle. They're prepared to run completely all around the big expanses of the oval. There is Johnson for the ruse. Getting down low as the big man. Bursting through is Thomas. He's a strong barrel-chested rooster, but he has been upset there by Baker. Baker gets that further afield. Good around the corner kick. Nice attempt to mark by King. King goes to get it again. Good vertical leap on him as King. He Take tries to go his own, uh, get, get his own ball, doesn't he? He does, yep. I like that sort of thing from a ruckman. Good below his knees. And well played by Brett. We've mentioned those same players. And this is really good play coming out. I think that was Skullthorpe. Tried to put the... Well, we can see there. Just around. It's really interesting. We got that uh, there just a little bit too high. And it will be paid here to Clarence. Clarence um, decided to... it well there. You, you can hear the umpire through the mic. It's pretty high-tech stuff here. Yeah, no. We've got all the, the bells and whistles here at uh, Duff TV and the STJFL. Brought to you, of course, by our premium partner, Barwicks. Now, it is Clarence. Low, lying kick and some loose checking there. It ends up in the hands now of Barton. Barton. Looking to go directly towards the goals. Old goes the short pass, but chipping in, reading the play beautifully there. It was nice play by that defender. I think that one might be Archer Dobson. It was Dobson, number 24. We're just, he, he had a change of Guernsey, so thank you for that, Brad. And it was a good mark by Dobson. And, uh, but it is Clarence. So we're, what are we, four minutes in now. No score, but very entertaining match. Very even, as I just check the uh, laptop it's Clarence who uh, 55% in possession so very very even so far the ball has been down there once for the channel but here they go again and it's a strong mark by Skullthorpe just looking to bring someone else in slowly off the mark oh he's gone laterally he must watch a bit of Carlton I would suggest but that's a beautiful kick comes out towards Murray and that certainly opened up the play Clarence have a few players behind now and now they're bursting right through the centre of the ground and uh, the big man goes up in Jaden King uh, he, he gets a lot of the ball doesn't he Brad? He yep. does indeed he does. He's a both of, of these two fellas uh, yep. Brett as well and uh, here goes towards Skullthorpe and he's just loved that one the big fella just got on his own and he imposed himself on that one Brad didn't he? He did he's a big unit and Skullthorpe took that strong mark and just directing traffic. And now he's just got to go back and finish his work off. Here he goes. Skullthorpe goes in and it's touched right on the line. It's uh, going very, very close. Clarence trying to keep it in. They do so. Trying to work very, very hard is Harry Scott as it's just uh, coming in. So that was good defensive work there, Brad, on the last line of defence by the Ruse. Certainly was, yeah. Desperation Rocks. needs to be shown in the back line. Certainly was. So nicely done. Very, very even contest. Let's see how they go now Fair when they get it to on. their attacking area. Goes kick. Clarence, yeah. big left foot kick. Goes around towards that, if you like, the half back flank. But it, it is channel there loading up again as it comes back towards King. King just bitten off a little bit too much. Yeah. I mean, he's been a dominant Peppers. player. But sometimes uh, you just got to look up, Brad, don't you? And if someone's in a better position, yeah. just get it off to them nice and quickly. Yeah, no, I like the endeavour to take them on, but uh, should have been a bit more talk around that contest. I think that's more the thing. It's not the player actually with the football, is it? It's the players around it, because the most important muscle that you've got out in the football field is the tongue. You've got to communicate that with your teammates. But that's a learning experience as channel. 
go from that wing position. Yeah, got a got strong it. mark taken by Stay Johnson. On. Johnson, this is his uh, second mark for the day, and he is courageously coming back in towards that corridor. Ruse pick it up under a bit of pressure now. You can see, just getting a little bit slippery now as uh, Trigar is there, but the, the Ruse go forward. Very, very even contest. It's Friday night football in the STJFL Barwicks League. It's the under-13 boys division. We hope you are enjoying the game. Coming to you from Snug Park as the channel. Get that kick okay, back towards on. the centre of the ground. Well played there by Rose. Dispossessed this particular occasion by Yay. Harry Scott. Handball goes over to the uh, half-forward flank for the Ruse. Just trying to sink the slipper into this one. Here's an opportunity. Looked up, goes the short pass. Under a bit of pressure here now. What can the Ruse do? Tries to get it out with a quick handball. Man's in a dangerous position. I think that might have been Ping for throwing the ball. Or was it uh, deemed to be... I think it was going to be a free kick there. The Ruse, Brad. We'll have yeah. a look at that one again. The umpire said you can play that on to advantage. And the, the first goal has gone to the Ruse. Yeah, got him in the back, I think. Just yep. that gag we'll have a look here. Oh, there it was. We can yeah. see there. That was very, very clear. Uh, back when I was a, a, a young lad, of course, we used to have the old Watch Your Verdict on the Sunday afternoon footy show. And that might have been one for that. But the slow-mo replay just showed quite succinctly how that was in the back. So the first goal then goes to Clarence. And uh, we can see on the screen uh, some of the great sponsors, of course, and that's Cranes combined, uh, one of the big uh, premium partners down here at uh, the Channel Football Club. They do a power of work, don't they, Brad? Yes, they do. They do indeed. It's been very, very busy times. Very busy indeed. So here goes Channel. Kick, kick by Murray. Wide open spaces, playing behind. That's where the forwards have got to be a little bit alert to that quick kick. That's a great tackle, holding the ball. And you love to see your forwards get out and get dirty like that, Brad. And the big tackle has been applied. And I think this will be Sculthorpe now. Jordan is going back and having a line-up for goal. You're backing from here, Brad. Oh, here he goes. He was a bit quiet. He goes back. He just lent a little bit on that one. You. I reckon uh, if he Everybody watches else, that back on here. the big screen, he can just out. see Lent back slightly instead of head just quite Fire over on. the ball. And just put that to the right-hand side, and that one's hit the post. But it's the okay, first score, and uh, we're in the nine-minute mark of the first quarter. And here come the channel again and uh, had a shot. Marks and I reckon channel. that kick there, Brad, I'd just like it to see to go to the top of the square. Clear to out. the hot spot, yep. If you can't make it, especially because they've got some really good forwards and every time it's come down there oh, skull foot looks dangerous and as it comes to oh. Murray Murray uh, decides the center of the ball someone in a better Come position which he was but Clark has been dispossessed and there's that strong tackle again oh. brilliant work there by <coughs> excuse me Clark Contact. great Channel. endeavor and it's going to be a free kick and Marks this time it is the uh, free right kick the and it's going to go to Declan yeah. Brett and uh, he is yep. probably about 15 metres out from yep. goal, right, all but seven. directly in front. If anyone's watching this at the ground, get over on the river and pick this up for us because this is going to go a long way if he kicks through it. Oh, look at that kick. You picked it. Oh, he clear. is a beautiful kick of the football. Ready, and that is the first Come goal the for the Channel Saints and the first one for Declan Brett as he just marches back in. I, I, I loved what he did then, Brad. And what I say about that is... He knew where he was. He was, say, 20 metres out. And his uh, eyes didn't dart from side to side like you see in the AFL. He said, this is my footy. I'm going to take responsibility. And he went back and went straight at the goals. Yes, indeed. The captain's got to take ownership and uh, get the job done. And he did. He did indeed. So excellent work there. As you can see, the magnets starting to be shuffled around there by Coach Cornish for the ruse. As we just check... The Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard, and it shows Channel 128 to the Ruse, one goal straight as Channel going forward again. It's 11 minutes gone, and you can hear here the free kick has gone to Clarence for holding the man. Play on! Clarence this time decide to go wide. They've got the player on there in Pickett. Pickett. Long, raking kick around the body. And he goes as far as Brett, and Brett has taken a very nice mark. Brett 
backing off the Take mark quickly. Up. Directly down to the big men that particular time. That's the second time young Clark's had an opportunity. Unfortunately, didn't quite get it. Goes back towards the goal on the last line defence. Great defensive work there by Clarence. Just got him high there, Clarence. Been deemed to be yes, uh, taken that Come little bit there. too high. And uh, Clarence there. taking the free kick. As we can fly see on. there, that was a good effort on goal there, Brad, just quietly. Yeah, no, it was Off a great hands, effort. Fly on. A little left footer, but um, yeah. High contact. Who we got here? That's Fletcher Murray. Yep. Murray. Back here, now, you told Come us a little round. bit about the last uh, shot of the goal. How's, uh, how's this young fella's yep. uh, boot? Stand there. Yeah, I'd back him, I'd back him in for, from there for sure. All right, Even then. There's the kiss of death. Lefty from the wrong side, but no, nah, I'll back him. Okay, so Fletcher Murray. Oh, go. what a scything kick. It goes right to the line, oh, and oh, it's touch. just touched. Gee, that was a beautiful kick, wasn't it? It just swung Marks from here. left to right as the skipper has come out. off just to get a bit of a Turn breather. I think he's got a few problems there, so he'll, uh, I'm sure he no won't more. be off for very long. Seven, so right. what have we got now? Nearly 13 minutes gone Fly in the on. first quarter. Very entertaining game down here at Snug back, Park. Clarence. Number three. Well, the umpires uh, are deciding that if you are playing in Stand. front, Brad, you're going to get the free kick. And as long as there's consistency in that, I don't mind that at all. No, nah, exactly right. First thing for the ball gets reward. And if you're a coach, you can you can actually go Yay. out to your players and say, well, we understand that if you are there, it's we know that we're going to get the free kick as uh, Clarence now trying to get the answer for that last goal. But it's intercepted here by Channel. End over end stuff on that third one. It'll bounce off. Clark comes out. Good contest between Where's Clark and Milne. Milne wins it on this particular occasion. Goes further afield. Beautiful ground conditions yeah. here. If you haven't been to uh, Snug Park, it's down here just on the bay, and it's uh, beautiful vistas uh, from our commentary Boys tower kick. position as Channel get that quick kick in. It goes to the open spaces. Got to bend down and pick it up. Overrunning that particular time. Back is there is Watson. Yeah. Watson goes out towards the open paddock. Clarence have the ascendancy. Need to get the block here. Comes back inside. Goes for the dispossessed. Well played by Barton. Bit of a push and a shove coming down to the last minute of play. It is King who uh, normally plays in that ruck, ruck rover position. As we said before, got a very good vertical. It gets down on his knees now, trying to urge his players to get that ball forward. Brilliant pick up there by Clark. Clark, long, raking kick. Goes out towards uh, Charlie Clark. Now, are they related uh, at all? No, no relation there. Actually, uh Clark is related to Scalthorpe, they're uh, cousins. Oh, cousins. It's a little bit different down here, we, you know what we're like down in Snug. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> okay, well I think you can go through all those uh, relatives in just a few moments. The Clarks, the Scalthorpes, who might be for you the Everett Smiths, the Wrights, we'll, we'll get all that low down from you, all the lineage of where Mark we said. come from. There's the kick coming okay, back in, it on. just goes over the top to Fulks. he can't bring that one in. They're fighting very hard as we're coming down to the last few seconds. They need to get a clean pick there by Leonard, who tries to pick that up. Well played by Fulks again. Hands, he does on, get the kick. And it is the skipper. Brett picks it up. Long, raking kick. Oh, and it has right gone on through it. in Fantastic. right on the siren. Magnificent work by Declan Brett to pick that ball up. And the beauty of that one, uh, Brad, was the clean hand below your knees. The yes. way he picked that one up, if he fumbled it, he was in trouble. He picked it up clean as a whistle, went back towards the goal, knew where he was, <coughs> excuse me, and put it through for his second goal. So at quarter time here <coughs> at Snug Park, it is Channel 2 3 15. The Clarence Roo Roos, one goal straight. It is Declan Brett who has got the uh, two goals. And uh, I just wasn't quite sure. I think it might have been Archer, but we'll just double-check that one, though, at quarter time. So, Brad, it's a very, very entertaining game of football so far. It's been fantastic. The endeavour for the footy's been great from both sides. There's been plenty of run from both midfields, so it's really good to see. Well, we're going to take a break, and as we go out, we just should say a very, very warm thank you to the sponsors of the Channel Footy Club. So we've got Tom Moore & Son, IGA Baxter's Snug, Snug Beach Cabin and Caravan Park. I know every time I come down in this area, that's exactly the place I always stay. Concrete Taz, Taz Sow, 
Storm Bay Marine Services, Meredith's Orchard and Cranes combined. So as we said, it is quarter time. We're going to have our first break and we look forward to all the action. Don't go too far when we come back very shortly. Have a look. I'm not saying Noah. Tricky. Jack Baker Baden, Zeph, Jaden, Artie. A little bit of a different back line. The back line then was very good. Just continue that. Continue that. Bring the ball to ground and pretty much stop the shots on goal like we did. They got, what, one goal that quarter? That's pretty good effort. Boys! Boys! Deco, Kobe, Fletch, Noah. Bit of a different yeah. midfield. Just try something while well, Jaden's going to sit there because Chaz is just having a. Bit of a test there. Ebru and Dom, young boys on each wing. Work out which wing you want each. And just run all day. That's all we want. Xavier, Clarkson, Sam, Jordan, Chase, Caden. Do what we do. Keep working around. Be an option. Work up the ground. Work back. There's so much space out here. What was that? Start. Start, boys. We're going to give it to Clanscape. Well, Love what we've done. The second the boys. Boys, yeah. Yeah. boys. Boys, listen. Boys. This quarter, every backman but Jaden, if our forward line are trying to lock it in and we're and players are kicking it in, we're going to be behind halfway. Forward line, other way. If we're kicking it in, yeah. if we're kicking it in, we're going to be behind halfway. Five of us, Jordan and Jaden, you're the ones that can stay behind, or you've got to call someone else back. Yeah. Remember, remember the anti-density rule? They talked us through it last week. Edgy lights, one, two, three, three, two. So welcome, welcome back here to Snug Park, uh, which uh, we have got a very, very good game uh, in, in store. It is the Channel Under 13s v the Clarence Ruse in the STJFL Barwick's game of the night. I love it when we can come out for Friday night football. Of course, we want to have a shout out to our very, very dear friends, IGA, where the locals matter, over 80 stores throughout Tasmania. Your Hobart Health, we have to thank Dr. Mark Baldock and all our friends, Bennett's Petroleum, Mood Food and Brighton's Best Bakehouse, the home of the famous Australian pie of the year, the Tindori Tandoori Chicken. I know you love a pie, Brad, but uh, it's all chicken burgers tonight as we can't wait to get round there toward the end of this game as Channel go forward. Sculthorpe goes out. He looks very dangerous. They can get it in his area there this particular time. He is bowled over, and the ball is repelled here by the ruse. I like the way that uh, Watson's gone about his work. He's only diminutive in the size of his body, but by gee, he goes in very, very hard as Ryder Jones is on all fours, and the umpire said it's not going to come out of there, so I'm going to throw this one aloft. I think Channel always looked dangerous, Brad, when Sculthorpe is down there, if he can get a one-on-one -on -one contest. Just yes. need to create a little bit of space for him. Yeah, no, getting it in there quick will certainly help that. And there it goes yeah. again. Yeah, that big one over the back. If you can just create a little bit of space and the other players can create that space, they need to look up and have a look for him. As Here he goes now. Can he bend down and hook it back? Oh, he bends down, the big fella. But he's rushed that on the boot and has just hit the post, as we can see. Some of the crowd here, I think that's even... Spider-Man's even come down to Snug Park. Great to see him and Mario as well. So uh, They're not sure it's a great crowd. <laughs> oh, characters. Don't worry about that. You've got your Skullthorpe, your cousins, your Clarks. You've got your Spider-Man. You've got your Marios. Wonderful to see the colour of the pageantry down here at Snug Park. It's STJFL football at its finest down here as all but the high tackle. It was Elliot Milne did a great job there for the Ruse. They've got this uh, player out. Isn't it crucial when you're watching <coughs> excuse me, any form of footy, Brad, if you can be clean below your knees, the advantage it gives you? Oh, definitely, definitely. Keeping your feet clean below your knees, you're a, you've got a couple of yards on your opponent already. Okay, so it was also Skullthorpe who this time 
goes around and the big fellas just rush that. So I can just look down at the old laptop and that's uh, four shots for no goals for Skullthorpe. He might be getting some homework from his dear old dad, I might suggest. Uh, just on that one, actually he's getting in great position. One thing I reckon uh, he could probably do here is either just sort of straighten up or just take that time. But again, it's his teammates that need to get over and tell him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A little bit of talk, give him, a, let him have those couple of steps, and away he goes. But um, one thing he won't be getting, and that's kicking lessons from me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it is the Roos who picked that one up. Very dangerous when they go forward very quickly. It's an open forward line, but backing back is uh, Clark. Clark goes back in the middle, uh, but nicely worked here by Watson. Watson's been terrific across that half-back flank for the Roos. Giving them drive from back there. Leading out is Archer. Archer tries to get it over to his teammate there in Jones. But a bit of a stalemate in shoes. And it is going to be a ball up. There is the throw up. Can't take it out, but they do there by Channel. Back up through the centre of the ground. Channel, nice work. They go the old barrel this particular time. That's the one that you put it out in front of your forward. Skullsort there. He goes to pick it up. There's no prior, says the umpire. Goes back in to get it again. Quickly pushes on his boot. Needs to get on his bike and receive that one. Uh, that's uh, Rollins who uh, tries to get that kick back in the middle. Was uh, Chase Rollins. And there is the bench. And I tell you what, there is some very, very big mullets. Now, we always are interested in the mullet of the night and that young man I think is number 16 Oliver Everett Smith and I reckon he's got the prize just at the moment Brad yeah no he's uh he's certainly got one of the uh better mullets in the club that's for sure well talking of mullets we go back to the footy and that is a ripping goal there and there is the Malay giving the round of applause very very happy with his form but let's have a look on the mood food replay what great play that was as it was Murray who just goes bang and puts it through. He was really a wake up to that one that time and played nicely on that uh, left foot. He'd be one of the smartest footballers out there tonight, I reckon, young Fletcher. He lives and breathes it. Yeah, he just saw the advantage there. He knew that on a, on a traditional set shot, Brad, that he was going to be troubled for the distance but once he got around and he really got that big left pendulum moving he got more momentum didn't he six, 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 against Clarence. One more in the back line, four line. so there you go and uh, where do you sit on these uh, congestion rules you happy with it at all Brad yeah look I actually, I I actually don't mind the, the old six six and six it, yep. it gives an even playing field for everyone yep and it keeps we come here to watch football not to watch you know, floods. Yep. Yeah, no, on with you. I think it's a, a great initiative as Channel under the pump. Let's see what Clarence can do. They got that goal early in that first quarter. They'd got really be keen on. to get another one got as the, the high hands. hands. This is the quick on. kick. Here is a big chance for them if they can take clean possession, and they do. And Jude Archer comes back and goes back. Well played by Archer. And I liked it the way they got it into their open forward line. And I think we see here on the Mood Food replay, Brad, Channel were just zoning off. You can see they had three players around, but no one actually picking up the player. Yeah, that's one of my pet peeves as a backman. Yep. You, you're either man on man or you zone. You can't do one of the, you can't have 50-50. It just doesn't work. So a little bit of a lesson for the boys <laughs> down there, man on man. I think it's really uh, an understanding in the course of under 13 that it is a learning phase, but you, you work out indeed if you don't have the footy and you don't own the match, you've got to be finding a player. Yeah, so exactly that'll come right. to them, and I think that's a, be a learning experience that I reckon Coach Keane will bring up probably there at half time. And all of a sudden now momentum is swinging back towards the ruse, but uh, it's going to go to channel now. You can hear quite clearly... That one was deemed to be kicking in danger. So good protection for the player prepared to get their head over the footy as the pass comes in now and King takes that mark. King needs to move quickly. More of a pendulum kick on that particular time is uh, Toby Johnson has come in and intercepted that one. And he goes back to try and get the ruse moving. They go out 
to that expansive area on that wing. And a nice mark taken by Cornish, the captain, Cornish. Further afield and judging it brilliantly there was uh, Thomas. Oh, went the bounce in the dewy conditions. And he's been pinged there. And you can see here it's just ran away from him. It was never going to come up. And talking of learning experiences, Brad, I think he's done that once and he'll put that one away for sure. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Actually, really good tackle there. Did well not to push him straight in the back and give the free kick the other way. Yeah, the lesson there is never give it away as Declan Brett, who was one of those chasers, gets that ball moving very, very quickly. Good contest there. Clark, who picks it up, got his hands on the ball in the first quarter a few times, but this is the young fellow that I've been most impressed with, young Asher Watson. And he then gets them forward into their attacking area. Driving that one further afield. Beautiful play there by Channel. Another kick that comes back towards the Ruckman there in King. Dispossessed. Clarence just trying to go man on man here as they just soccer that one off. Trying hard there is uh, Rollins for Channel. But Clarence again. You reckon that greasy conditions Brad's playing on their mind now so they're a lot of the boys are trying to kick that ball off the ground. I reckon that they can just see them try and bend over a little bit. Yeah, that's it's one of the things that we don't want creeping into the game of footy. We want them bending over, picking it up. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Try and reward that player. We can see here this young man, Declan Brett, he is a ball player. He went down and tried to get that one as soon as he did. The tackler came in, just trying a bit of an argy-bargy here. It is just adapting as that's really gone from uh, that late afternoon deep into the night and just that little bit of dew around it's quite clear down here at Snug it's a beautiful part of Tasmania as we can see here on the interchange bench Clarence making one or two of the changes going through constantly that interchange bench is being worked over as Clarence picked that ball up that was stopped and he was stopped by Channel on that particular occasion. And he goes as far as Watson. Watson just trying to, as he's always done all night, bring his players in. He found it quite simple to bend over and pick the ball up. He did a really nice job as Murray chases hard up after it. It was Archer who went after him. But, gee whiz, not only he's doing it at both ends of the grounds. Where's his favoured position, Brad? Anywhere on the ball. Anywhere where there's ball, he, he plays very well off a half-back flank. He, Doesn't he? He helps out in the older age groups, yep. and that's, he, he plays so well. Um, but, yeah, get him get him around the ball. It's really interesting sometimes. Uh, some players just know how to find it and where to run, don't they? And, and I can sense that with Fletcher Murray. He's got a good football smarts about him as it was King. Did a great job. The, the big fella got in that front position and got hands to it. As that ball is loose on that uh, forward line. Tell you what, number 14, do you know that young man there? He's got a nice mullet. I think we'll just, uh, when, I think it's 14. Let me just check on that in just a few moments. But it is Clarence picking it up there. That was uh, Bedo. Now it was Jones who chips in. Jones goes further out. There is Johnson. Again, that was an opportunity to pick it up there by Leonard. Overruns it on this particular occasion. Just a little bit fumbly. I think they're just adapting to the more greasier conditions as we can see here. Channel no. Now, that was right. Right tries to barge his way through and then find someone else. Trigger. Can't pick it. You can see there it was deemed told to play on. It was unfortunate with Cooper stopped. And I don't mind that at all. He was the man who got himself under the ball. He showed great courage there, Brad, didn't he? Yeah, certainly did. Certainly did. He stood strong. He knew the bigger body was coming at him. Yeah, sometimes it's very, very easy just to get the old twinkle toes and just get the short steps. But he, he said, well, it's my turn to stand underneath the onion. And he did a very, very nice job. So here goes Brett, bringing them back through the centre corridor. Hasn't been down in the channel area for a little while now, so that uh, it's been a bit of a momentum change as there is Rollins. He's dispossessed as he's picked up there by Pickett. Pickett, long raking kick. Good contest here on the half forward flank for Clarence, trying to knock it out. Been deemed it won't go any further and the umpire will throw this one up. Goes directly up. Good tap out there by the Ruckman, Harry Scott. 
great energy shown by him. It's Johnson. They've got a couple of big fellas uh, playing at this, both at the centre half forward and in the ruck position. That was good team play there by Channel. But the long kick has been uh, chopped off here by the Ruse. The only thing I'd uh, comment on here, Brad, is it's just uh, maybe some of the players just need to lift their eyes slightly. You know, they're getting the ball just like that one. When try and pick someone up instead of just barreling it to no one in particular. I don't mind the open space, but just kicking the packs more the thing I'm sort of talking about. Yeah, exactly right. It's a possession just game these days. You've it got is, to isn't use it? it as best you can. And there's another prime example. Oh, what's happened here? We, we've been told it's going to be a penalty. You can see what that one was for. And then, did you see that one, Brad? We'll have a look in the no, mood food replay. It was before that, so... They're going right back. So this is... Uh, Put down your glasses, I reckon. Now, William Stop is right in front in the 10-metre square. And the young rooster here, he's been uh, bequeathed a gift, an early Christmas present. And Billy Stop has put that one through. We'll see if Jerry can uh, get us back and see what that penalty was for. So the told to kick goes over, holding the ball. Uh, ah, didn't give the ball back. Just dropped it. Yes, he did. It's, uh, he'll be fr pretty disappointed in himself with that one. But um, Even if you yeah. don't agree with what the umpires called it, I tell you what, in uh, been watching football for 45, uh, let's say, let's call it 50 years, uh, Brad, I've never seen an umpire say, I'm very sorry I made a mistake here. You take the free kick. No, nah, <laughs> me either, Hoppy. <laughs> so you just got to get on with it. Let's have a look at the Brighton's best base house scoreboard, which reads Channel 3422 for a very, very accurate Clarence Ruse. Three goals straight, 18. So uh, the old 6-6 six, six and 6 is playing up again. OK, who is it against Channel this time? Yeah, it looks like it. So that's one apiece. I think next time the old free kick will be going to the opposition. So now we are all in order for the umpires to throw that one a loss. Well, it's been an interesting quarter here, Brad. It's been a massive momentum swing uh, back to the ruse. And to be quite blunt, uh, Channel have been fortunate that they maybe haven't made more of it because the ball has been uh, parked down in the forward line for the ruse. So they're doing a pretty good job, uh, the defenders, because they're... There has been a lot of attacking opportunities here for the Ruse. That's good play by Brett. Tries to get it to the open spaces. Tries to skip her in Murray. And the forwards will be a little bit cold at this stage. They haven't had much of the ball as the siren has sounded here for half time. And, and we just checked the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard, which shows Channel 3-4-22 to Clarence. Three goals straight for... The uh, home team, it is uh, Declan Brett with a couple and Fletcher Murray. And uh, for the visitors, it is Jude Archer with a couple and uh, Billy Stop with that single. So, Brad, it was a... I guess the uh, first half was played in uh, in halves because, for me, I thought in that first quarter it, uh, it was Channel who looked more likely to run away with the game. That said, they probably could have, <coughs> with a bit more accuracy, put themselves in front. But Clarence have done a... Great job to work their way forward and got themselves right into this game. Yeah, exactly right. Um, looks like the scoring end down at the river. Yep. Um, Channel's got a bit of work ahead of them. They've got to, got to stop the flow and try and get a bit more scoreboard pressure on. OK, so we can see some of the under-15 boys coming out here to warm up for the uh, next encounter. So it's a big night of football here at Snug Park. We hope you're enjoying the coverage on the uh, Barwick's STJFL Friday night uh, games of the round. Tonight, this first game is Channel Under 13, the Clarence Ruse Under 13. We're going to have our halftime break now and we look forward to the second half very shortly. In front of your forward, Skullsort there, he goes to pick it up. There's no prior, says the umpire, goes back in to get it again. Quickly pushes on his boot, needs to get on his bike and receive that one. Uh, that's uh, Rollins who uh, tries to get that kick back in the middle was uh, Chase Rollins and there is the bench and I tell you what there is some very very big mullets now we always are interested in the mullet of the night and that young man I think is number 16 
Oliver Everett Smith, and I reckon he's got the prize just at the moment, Brad. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's certainly got one of the uh, better mullets in the club, that's for sure. Well, talking of mullets, we go back to the footy, and that is a ripping goal there. And there is the Malay giving the round of applause. Very, very happy with his form. But let's have a look on the Mood Food replay. What great play that was, as it was Murray who just goes bang and puts it through. He was, yep. And it keeps, we come here to watch football, not to watch, you know, floods. Yep. Yeah, no, on with you. I think it's a, a great initiative as Channel under the pump. Let's see what Clarence can do. They got that goal early in that first quarter. They'd really be keen to get another one as the high hands. This is the quick kick. Here is a big chance for them if they can take clean possession, and they do. And Jude Archer comes back and goes bang. Well played by Archer. And I liked it the way they got it into their open forward line and through and then find someone else, Trigger. Can't pick it. You can see there it was deemed told to play on. It was unfortunate with Cooper stopped, and I don't mind that at all. They're going right back. So this is, uh, put down your glasses, I reckon. Now, William Stop is right in front in the 10-metre square, and the young rooster here, he's been uh, bequeathed a gift, an early Christmas present, and Billy Stop has put that one through. We'll see if... This program brought to you by IGA, where the locals matter. Having trouble finding an after-hours doctor for your family? Sometimes we need medical assistance when everything is closed. In the Old Bridges Brothers Building, 71 Bathurst Street, after-hours Dr Hobart is open every day till 10pm. Phone for an appointment or book online. And for added convenience, you'll also find your Hobart chemist also open until 10. When minor accidents and illness happen, we're here for you. After Hours Dr Hobart and your Hobart chemist, open till 10pm every day. So we're back here at Snug Park, a big game in the STJFL Barwick's big game of the night. It is the Channel Saints, the, the Clarence Roos in the under-13 boys division. Very, very even contest so far. It's been a, basically a game in two halves of the first half. It was, to my liking, Channel, excuse me, looked more likely in the uh, first quarter. And that was Clarence did a really, really good job to fight their way back into the game. But 
This is the Premiership quarter. It'll be interesting to see, given that Channel R going towards the, excuse me, the scoring end. Clarence take possession. Lovely pass to Johnson. Johnson back off the mark quickly. Clarence trying to spread. Oh, I think uh, there, Brad, the young fella for Channel has walked over the mark. We'll probably see that in replay. And uh, the, um, just see here. The there he goes. He's run towards him. And I, I guess the umpire's probably told him to stand. And th again, you, you've got to be careful on that one. Yeah, that's the old stand rule. And yep. he took off before the umpire called play on. So if that's the case, you've got to be very, very careful. And this time, it is Toby Johnson who goes back. It gives you an opportunity. That's been reasonably costly, Brad. So two 50-metre penalties that were certainly there have given Clarence opportunities to score goals. So Channel just need to be a little bit mindful about some of the things that is in their control. Yeah, yeah. Mm. This might be one back the other way for the young fella not... Uh Coming back on the mark. Looks like they're moving back, so you're quite right there. It's certainly going to be a good a learning experience for both teams, isn't it? And it is channel. Go out to that wide area. It's a beautiful night here, clear. But I guess with the clear conditions, it just means that that ball is just going to be a little bit greasy. So maybe the old hands have to do, be a little bit flatter to knock it down. But uh, we'd love to see the uh, young fellas bend down and, and an attempt like that beautiful pick up there by the Roos. That's what we want to see. Going back into the centre of play, it's Dingle picks it up. Dingle goes back inside. He was beset upon there by a rampaging Zeff Clark for the Saints. Trying to apply some pressure. Getting out of trouble here. It's gone one too many and a good tackle. I'll tell you one thing, Brad. The umpires have been... Very, very consistent in rewarding the player who's, uh, you know, going the ball and going that tackle there like that. Yeah, no, they've been very good. As we saw right there. Yes, indeed. Got a little bit fancy. Did get a bit fancy. I don't mind the, the attempt to get the handball, but when you're going to handball, you want to handball to someone who's got time and space, not handball to someone who's under the pump. And so this time, <coughs> excuse me, I think it's uh, Baker who goes out wide. Baker looking for one of the prime movers here in Jaden King. King Inside. can't pick it up, but he's chasing it further afield. Rollins is over there to try and assist. King Looking gets in, it back. You can see players in front of him. Gee, that was really clever play. Goes yeah. down towards Sculthorpe, Third playing behind six. this particular occasion, the play big fella, and can't pull that one in. It's all dried up as far as he's concerned in, uh, since that out. second quarter. Can't and Clarence just taking their time now. Nice low kick out towards Toby Johnson. Sure Good cut of the lad. Right? Again, he's been one of the boys that they've been looking to go towards. There's a good strong mark taken by Barton. Barton's bumped off that one. Goes in again, and there is King. King goes further afield. Good contest here, finally. It is uh, Rollins who okay, tries to bend down on. to pick that one you up. Run. But it comes out to one of Clarence's better players in Johnson. Johnson, left foot, scything kick to the advantage of the running Walter. Chipping in though now is uh, Fletcher Murray. He's got a bit of work to do now. They need to be careful if they get it out to that wide open space. There is the young defender. Good play there. Goes back in and uh, a good bump on that play. And uh, how's the umpire seen this one maybe uh, bumped off without the ball let's have a look on the mood food replay might have actually been a kick there brad and just taken his feet out yeah not maybe that's sure. what was so it's uh, now billy stop billy stop he's got one goal and oh stop had the accuracy there but brilliant play by channel to get some of their tall defenders back just to touch that one over and uh, it is really closing up there as we see the Brighton's best bake out. It's 3-4-22 channel to Clarence, 3-2-20. Brett goes to try and get it. There is Murray. Murray, he'll sink the slipper into that one. Can't get it again. Now he's gone down and picked it up. Just barges his way through. Great determination 
from the half-back flank. <coughs> Sculthorpe comes out. He's dispossessed as Clarence picked that one up. Again, coming out onto that wing position. And uh, Clarence taking it up. Just a little bit of uh, loose checking there by Channel, but it's uh, just been a couple of players, Brad. Murray across half-back. Uh, Brett across the middle. And King are keeping uh, a Channel in it. They've been very dominant, mate. It's, this is the kick. Just getting it down here. So Sculthorpe, who's playing, normally being deep, has to come up to get the ball. So someone else needs to do the, the heavy lifting. It's uh, Kobe Sculthorpe who goes back now. It is going towards the goals, end over end, but there isn't anyone there to pick that ball up. And Clarence are able to pick that one up and kick it out wide. <coughs> now working hard. That's uh, Capewell. Capewell, big, long roost. Sculthorpe had made position in front. It went over the top. There is uh, Cousin, I think that Stand. one is, is Kobe Sculthorpe, but he's been dispossessed. That's just a, maybe a little bit of awareness there, Brad. I reckon the quick hands might have been the ticket there. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Just a, another one of those learning things that we've been talking about. Yep. Yeah, bit of communication. Like get that quick hands over to uh, Jordan, and he might have been away. But anyway, ball comes inside the 50. Griffiths going out towards it. Just across that, maybe the half forward flank for Channel and the half back flank for, for Clarence has been the difference so far. They've um, When they get it deep, they look very likely to Channel, but it's just across that half back flank where blokes like, say, your, your Johnson and Watson for the Roos have drifted across and mopped up very nicely, Brad. Yeah, no, the Roos are doing really well at uh, setting up across that half forward line. Channel's just going to have to be a little bit tighter, a yep. little bit smarter with the ball coming in. That's maybe where they can, if they just go direct, they're going to be picked off every time. Maybe the, some of those forwards just need to create some space as that's a quick kick there by Kobe Sculthorpe, looking for his cousin. Tries the big tackle, so this is the kick. There's the hands, if he can try and get it out, and he does so that particular time out towards Brett. Going back in to get it in. This time it's in a good position, so now is an opportunity for Channel to try and set up and get their power forwards into a more dominant position. It is Declan Brett who goes up. Here is Murray. He, uh, unfortunately, that particular time, Brad, just tried to do a little bit too much and get it on the boot. Nothing fancy was the time because they were deep waiting for that ball, but now the transition comes for Clarence. Good chase down now. So what are we, about halfway through? It's traditionally been the scoring in, Brad, as well, this one. So Channel... You'd like to think if you're a channel supporter, we'd want to score a goal or two this quarter. Yeah, exactly right. They've had a couple of goes, a couple of points on the board. Um, midfielders are going to need to work hard just to get down and give their forwards a bit of a hand. OK, so what happens? Uh, the back line have moved up, which has kept it open for Clarence. And I think that uh, might be Archer who socked that one off. And he has put it through for a goal. So watch this one on the Mood Food replay. I don't mind, Brad, if it's going to be a kick off the ground when you're under pressure like this. But let's have a look at this one as the ball came into the open spaces. It certainly was excellent work there by Jude Archer. He tried to pick it up, a little bit slippery, kept it to his own advantage. <coughs> and when he saw the defender coming really, really close, he able to soccer that one through. And that's his third goal, one to Billy Stop as well. And if we check the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard, it shows that Clarence, for the first time in the night, have got their noses in front. They are 4 2 26 to channel 3 4 22. In the side. Nine minutes gone you, Ron. in the third quarter. You can see here, barging their way through, was uh, Stacey for channel, playing across that uh, half back flank. And the umpire will come and throw it. Any concerning signs if you put your coaching hat on here brad any change that you might make for the channel oh look i'll leave the hard stuff up to jim Keane. uh he's the brains trust but yeah the midfield's got to push a bit more got to get a few more numbers around the ball and a bit tighter in the back line yep that last goal came from two clarence guys being gold so goal side of the next channel defender so it'll be a bit smarter you can't be there. That was beautifully picked up you. as Clarence. Just starting to win a little bit more of the ball, but it's players like your, your, your Murray, your, your King and your, your Bretts. But we just need a, a little bit more from 
a good mix of players as uh, that was Stop who came out, nearly took that mark. Good contest here, Channel. Bursting the way through is uh, Murray. Can't pick that one up. You know he'll go in to try and get that ball again. That was well played there by the Roos with a quick kick. Comes out towards uh, Stop. And this particular time he decides to play on really quickly to Billy Stop. But he's a little bit offline. And he puts it through for a minor score. But uh, this is great work from Clarence. Really from halfway through the second quarter to this particular point, they've really come to play. Maybe it was the long trip down here, Brad, that uh, they're just starting to find their sea legs. Yeah, just starting to starting to warm up now. <laughs> a little bit of running around gets the uh, frost off. I reckon they would have had a spell, you know, come over the eastern shore, big trip over the bridge, maybe down Sandy Bayish, a bit of a break, and then Got continue down the old outlet. Taking the coastal <laughs> route down through Truruna. Beautiful. As there is, you can hear the umpire saying it hasn't travelled the required distance, so they've been teamed to play on. That was Cornish, the uh, captain as that goes back and there is Cooper Stop, who takes a very very nice mark Toby Johnson now being told to play on he wheels around on his left boot he goes long there just for the moment I thought Murray was going to play on and he thought he might have had it as it has been touched through for a goal good defensive work there by Channel I tell you what Brad they are under the pump at the minute they certainly are the Clarence boys are playing well gee that was great Defensive work there by Charlie Wright, wasn't it? Just to dive down and push that one through for the minor score. Yeah, good desperation there. He, he did really well. So a mark taken here by King. King, this time, goes the short pass. That was a nice play by Channel. And what made the difference there was the clean hands. Need to get the handball if they can pick it up. Out there was Kobe Skullthorpe, just fumbled slightly. Playing behind was Clark and just second of the ball. And Clarence again have been rewarded for their efforts to try and pick the footy up. Clarence go the drop punt. Chipping in now was Jaden King. The, uh, the only thing there, the old lactic acid will be starting to pump through those lean legs. No, Brad, he's been running all night. Do you reckon he's got the tank to continue on? Yeah, no, mm. definitely. He's a, he's a runner good that athlete. one for sure. Okay. That's a good tackle there by Channel. That's the sort of thing that can lift the team. But Clarence are really going in hard as they get it across their half forward flank. Johnson picks it up. You know, he's got a big left foot kick. And out comes Murray. Well, they didn't learn too much from the bounce there in the second quarter, did they, Brad? No, no, they didn't. <laughs> but... I think this is uh, Billy Stop, who's going to be paid to kick. He's uh, been a goal kicker. He's got one and got close to a second. Gets it down there, but there is Murray. And Murray, of course, will go straight onto his left foot and gets it out to King. King will look back to Murray, I reckon. Gee, that's great play. And here goes Murray. Not a lot of time. It's got to be a big, long kick. And here is uh, Skullthorpe taking the mark. He goes round this time. Skullthorpe, long, raking kick. It's uh, gone off to that right-hand side. That's been a consistent kick for the young fella. But he did the right thing, I reckon, there, Brad, to, to get the play on. I like the way he went round. This is where maybe some uh, awareness of some of his teammates, just to apply the, a block for him to continue on his run. But in his vain attempt to get it down there, how are they going to go? Skullthorpe. Tries to get the tap over to, to the advantage of Murray, who's made his way down. And that's on the proper good side for him if he can Inside. get the ball. Trying to barge his way through, get some clearance. Here are the prime movers. King gets the handball over now. Get a quick kick if they can. Clark, long kick uh -huh. back into the square. But uh, taking the mark. They've been good in that last line of defence, Brad, haven't they, they've Clarence? They've been very good, Clarence. They're playing some really good footy. So there is... This is where they've got to be quick to man up. Oh. Heard them on, the over, on the crossover. So it was Sharpen who gets back. Clarence doing a really good job. It's deep into the third quarter now. Jones trying to get the handball out. And there indeed is the siren for three-quarter time as we check the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard. 
and it shows us that Channel are 3 4 22 trailing the Ruse 4 4 28 for the Ruse it's 3 to Archer and 1 2 stop and uh, for the home team Declan Brett's got a couple and Fletcher Murray has got the one well the game's in the balance Brad it certainly is there's a bit of work to do on both sides here It'll, it'll be an interesting last quarter. Well, it's all to be done. I hope you're enjoying the coverage. It's a goal the difference here on Friday night football at Snug Park between the Channel Saints and the Clarence Roos. And we're going to come back to see who will come out the victors very shortly. This program brought to you by IGA, where the locals matter. Having trouble finding an after-hours doctor for your family? Sometimes we need medical assistance when everything is closed. In the old Bridges Brothers building, 71 Bathurst Street, after-hours Dr Hobart is open every day till 10pm. Phone for an appointment or book online. And for added convenience, you'll also find your Hobart chemist also open until 10. When minor accidents and illness happen, we're here for you. After Hours Dr Hobart and your Hobart chemist, open till 10pm every day. Welcome back to Snug Park for the last quarter in what has been a very, very entertaining game of footy in the STJFL Barwick's Wholesale and Retail Landscape Supplies League for 2023. It is the Channel Under 13 Boys, that's the Saints, taking on the visitors, the uh, Clarence Ruse. And uh, I tell you what, Brad, everything looks fantastic down here. I noticed the canteens buzzing. There's a couple of people having some Friday night uh, uh, beverages just to enjoy the uh, end of the week in the club rooms. It, it looks all happy sailing down here at the Channel Footy Club. Yeah, look, it's fantastic down here. We, we love a bit of junior footy and, and the boys are putting on a great game for us. It's, it's going to be a great night. They certainly are. So here they go. Interesting that uh, changed it. That I think that was Brett who went up for the tap this time instead of King, but they both are prime movers on the ball and if they're to win this game... They need to get plenty of the onion as uh, the umpire will come in. I think, for me, we, we, it's, it's been a, a lot more of an even spread across for Clarence, uh, Brad, and there's been one or two more dominant. So if we can just get a little bit more from a few more players, I reckon, in channel, it'll be uh, probably go better for them, I would have thought. But time will tell. We're and in the early stages of this uh, final quarter, and indeed... It is uh, one goal the difference. So one kick from Channel 
and uh, they are more than back in this match. There is no doubt about that. Yeah, Very. Coach Kane's gone all out. He's got all his all his prime movers around the ball, so we'll see how they go. So here is one of them, Fletcher Murray, the left footer, getting it down to the full forward area. Here's an opportunity for Skullthorpe. He'll normally try and push round onto his right foot. He barges his way through. Oh, this is, looks better for him as he goes through and just misses on the near side, I think, this time. Well, he's been all over the goals except for the high diddle diddle today, Brad. Yeah, he's been everywhere. Look at that one. Let's hope he can get one on the board. Yeah, well, I think this time... I reckon he's, he's just... He's on the seven-point play to put him in front. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Now, I like the way he pushed through. The last time he, he went, or well, the last few times, he's gone the other side of his body, and this time he did a nice job. That's a great mark taken by Cooper Stop for the ruse. Cooper Stop getting it out towards Johnson. And this is what you alluded to, this quick turnover. Just coming from behind and being deemed to play on. The umpire said play on and Declan Brett was in the right place at the right time. And uh, this is a big chance. But, oh, this young fella here, uh, I think that, that was a good Archer, grab. that's no, number 19, that's Milne. Yeah, he has been so good down back, Brett. He's uh, taken some very timely marks. Yeah, that was yeah. one of them. He read the ball well. <clears throat> he certainly did. Here is Brett. Declan Brett, look at that. He has roosted that one, I reckon, 40 metres. He's, he comes out, it's uh, Skullthorpe who leads out. Skullthorpe, he won't be pushed off the ball. He gives the Dusty Martin, don't argue, but didn't quite uh, get the boot to it. And uh, the Roos are capitalising on that particular forward thrust. Yeah, they need to be a bit smarter moving forward. Here they go now. Murray, Murray, we know he's a good kick. As Murray goes back and Murray has put it through for a goal. Fletcher Murray, he's the co-captain. And the two co-captains have got two goals each. And uh, Brad Sculthorpe, as we see here on the Mood Food replay, that was a beautiful goal. He's all class, young Fletcher. He's going to be a real good player. Keep an eye out for him. You can see there he just put his head down, the left foot kick and straight through the middle. As we check the Brighton's Best Bakehouse scoreboard and it tells us that uh, Channel uh, 4 5 29 in a thriller against the Roos, 4 4 28. So the ball comes out here to Ryder Jones for the Roos. Jones quickly goes further afield. But Charlie Baker is back there. I haven't minded his game across half-back flank. He's tried very, very hard. Looks like King's just drifted across the half-back flank just to try and shore that play up. Here you go, the Saints. They've got some numbers now over the ball if they can pick it up. This time, Clark gets it out towards Murray. Murray goes towards uh, Skullthorpe. Skullthorpe, he's just beaten the ball, that one by Milne. Milne's playing on a, a bigger man. I don't mind the way he's playing on Skullthorpe. He's just playing off him a little bit and trying to run a bit, Brad, isn't he? Yeah, he's done the smart thing. He, you can't play body on body with yep. a bigger body, so he's, he's using his run. Absolutely. Well, here is a chance for Channel. Skullthorpe goes the big tackle this particular time, but there is the runner. That's Milne. Milne gets it out only as far as Murray. Murray now, long kick, goes into where an uh, area of danger, but Clarence are defending it. They're almost like they've got the finger in the dam at the minute. Can they hang on? It is Murray. Big, long kick. Being told to play on now. It's a uh, ball in dispute. It's been told to play on. Channel, get it back to the, uh, toward their goal, but this time it's gone over the boundary line. They almost stopped there, Brad. I thought they thought it was going to be a, a free, but the ball was knocked out, and the umpire clearly said that ball has knocked out, so play it on, and I don't mind that at all. Yeah, it was probably the right decision there. Could have been a free kick either way, but uh, decided with the play on. Well, interesting enough, it's been all channels. We just saw there as uh, it is seven inside 50s to nil in this last quarter here goes Skullthorpe he gets around on his right foot he can't get the kick away and this is the one it's uh, being brought to ground but Clarence are playing that last man on the line very very cleverly as uh, the ball is handballed out by Clark being deemed to be play on very passionate supporters all getting involved in the game now as uh, King picks that one up He's been dispossessed. 
Hard work there by Walter for the ruse. In goes King. He's the one who wants the ball. King picks it up. Long, raking kick down towards the full forward area. Here is uh, Sculthorpe. He picks it up. And uh, this particular time, he might have been pinged a little bit too high, Brad. And uh, great reward for the big fella there is he's going to go back and have a shot on goal. Yeah, he's been battling. He's done well this quarter. So hopefully this will be the one that we've been hoping for through the middle. Okay. So Skullthorpe goes good. back. Off the poop. Well and done. Uh, Skullthorpe has put that one through. Well done, Jordan. Put it through for his <coughs> first goal. Well, there's something about that word persistence, Brad. And he's been persistent. He's been he having has. a crack, hasn't he? And you can see he's, he's the old boat race. He's got uh, happy uh, Cheshire Cat as he goes back here and he just drilled that one through, as we see here on the Mood Food replay. Yeah, certainly needed. Gives the boys a bit of breathing space, but they'll be, uh, by no means can they lay down and rest on that. There's still... Over half a quarter to go, and these Clarence boys will be hoping to uh, get back on. So, again, if I put it to you as uh, your coach, you wouldn't be sort of putting the cue in the rack and trying to hold on to this game. You just sort of push on and try and get another goal. Yeah, no way. No, nah, they've got to get another goal. Low-scoring game. They've got to, got to get another one on the board. Okay, and here they go, the ruse. They go, the kick, it is being played to, as King. No, not King that particular time. It is King, I apologise, it was King. <coughs> he goes back in to try and get it again. Falling over this time, he's lost his footing on that. Barging way through was uh, Clark. Once this ball comes out, there's plenty of options. The two stop boys, that's uh, Cooper and Bill. Channel now. They go the old check side to the open spaces, leading towards it. This time are the ruse, and that's Toby Dingle. Yep. And uh, he's been rewarded for putting his head over the ball and the free kick down to the ruse. So we're into the uh, eight-minute mark now. As it is and Charlie channel. Baker, again, he's had a fantastic game. He has, he's hasn't he? He's really battled hard this last quarter, and he saved a couple of, a couple of forward entries there. He's done really well. Okay, so Skullthorpe. He tries to get the kick. He does get it away. Just gets the toe onto it. He was almost had the three or four hanging off him then, and he was still able to get that kick away. And they just uh, edged that little bit further in front. So what's that? Uh, eight points. So they've got to get a couple of goals to the Roos at this stage. We saw in the second quarter they can score quickly. As that's a brilliant mark. There's your mark of the day, Brad. What about that one from Jaden King? Jaden King is a he's a class player. He's got a hell of a leap, and he's certainly battled hard this last quarter. And that's a clever kick. He saw that, uh, and I don't know how, but Declan Brett he somehow got on his own, and it was a great kick, wasn't it? He lowered his eyes, and found Brett. Well, he's got two goals so far. <clears throat> See how he goes from about 40. It's going to have to be a big kick. He's Not got onto effort. it. It's going close. Oh, Skullthorpe's there. Skullthorpe, just for a minute, I thought he might have hooked that one around, but he wasn't able to. He's done well to follow that one up the forward. It's just gone out. Great work there by, um, <coughs> excuse me, Skullthorpe. What I liked about that one, Brad, was sometimes in a marking contest you think, oh, I haven't taken it and give it away, but he, it was a good chase, wasn't it? Yeah, he followed up well there. Good to see. All right. Ball now in dispute. If you're a channel supporter, they'd love one more goal just to put a bit of icing on top of their victory cake. Here comes Murray. Murray is going to get onto his left foot. Yes. And there is the goal of the night as Murray has pushed. I reckon he's pushed the whole Clarence team away with that right arm there, Brad, and put it through for his third goal. And could that be the sealer here at Snoke Park? Well, like I said before, there's still time left. You're Have not, a look at this. One. Two, three, four players he's just given the don't argue to. And he's came round and put that one through for a goal. Gee, that was a good goal. Excellent work there by Fletcher Murray. Those prime movers we mentioned in the middle, they've done their job. They're doing well. They've got four and a half minutes to go, though. All right, though. Uh, of course, it's great to see that uh, I'm very fortunate to have uh, the president of uh, the uh, Channel Saints in with me and uh, very unbiased uh, saying that uh, we've only got four and a half minutes uh, to, to hang on. 
Uh, it's great to have him in the co-commentary position as here is Murray running it onto again. We know that once he gets that left foot going, it's a long kick. He pinpoints Sculthorpe. Oh, they're putting on a clinic right now, Brad. He want to take his time, use up a bit of clock and then make sure of it. So it is Jordan Sculthorpe now taking the deep breath. Oh, he's decided just to handball that off to Declan Brett. He knew what he was doing because Brett has uh, drilled that one through, but the assist has gone to Jordan Sculthorpe. He doesn't mind who gets them as long as the team gets them. That was very, very unselfish play as we check the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard. And I tell you what, I think that might be all over now as Channel have moved to 7.648 to the Ruse 4.428. And see here just getting the high five and all of a sudden I reckon here he's got the call I reckon I can kick this if you give it to me and gee that was good play and the Clarence side just would have assumed they thought that he was going to have a shot for goal and yeah, he thought little, to himself that uh, that Declan Brett once he gets that it's momentum going Brad he's a very good kick isn't he yes he is so what was a game that was going to go either way has turned into a 20-point lead here for the Channel boys as Sculthorpe, who's got a couple of marks and has got some good tackles, again is doing some bustling work as the ball now has been seen to go over the line in front of the adoring crowd that has gathered down here at uh, Snug Park. And interesting enough, too, I can see that a few people from the Snug Beach and Cabin and Caravan Park have I've probably had their dinner, Brad, and they've just come across to look at the game as well. That's why the crowd has doubled in size. Yeah, now the crowd's about now. There's a lot of people in front of the bar and the canteen there, so good to see. We'll yeah. have a bit of Friday night footy. No, great initiative by the owners of the Snug Beach, Cabin and Caravan Park to give free entry free entry tickets to everyone who's staying there and that's why it's gone up by 225 people because the caravan park is pumping over there and they've all come to watch the footy here at Snug Park as it is Murray who has played a very nice game he goes on to his left foot long raking kick well done by Clarence I've loved the way Elliot Milne has gone about his work he's that done very well young he? Elliot he's, he's played a great game down, down back there I've loved the way Milne's gone about it. Um, Asher Watson in the probably the first half in particular, a little bit quiet in the last quarter. And Toby Johnson, they've had a good spread of players and here is indeed the man that I just mentioned. They need to get a wriggle on, oh goodness gracious me. We've had three attempts at that bounce, Brad. And every time she's just not gonna come back up on this very slippery surface as it is a long raking kick here by Harry Scott. It's a tough trek when you come down to Snug Park as Clarence have an opportunity. The big fella, Oliver Sharp, and trying to get his foot into that one. You can see here that uh, they've really come to play now. Here is uh, Clarence. I think that might be uh, Stop who tries to get that goal. But good defensive work here by Channel who are able to force and keep the pressure on and only a minor score for the Ruse. Young Charlie Baker again. He's playing a good quarter. Oh, another 50 metres. So they've been told and yeah. uh, there's been a couple played and uh, they're certainly getting to learn these rules. As <laughs> another there bounce. is that bounce that's never going to come back up. I reckon by about, uh, what are we, 30 seconds to go, they might just get it. But Declan Brett drops that one, but he really goes in to get it again. Look at that, the determination by the young fella. It's not coming out of there. Well, that's the place I wouldn't mind being to stay nice and warm. <laughs> In my old owner's skyrocket. No matter where you are, whatever conditions, try and keep warm. Here are the ruse. There's Elliot Milne. Good handball. But only goes as far as Clark. Zeph Clark gets that ball moving. And there is the siren. The two hoots for full time. And the crowd... They love their team down here, the Channel Saints. They've given them a rousing rendition as they'll know they'll burst the uh, song out as we check the Brighton's uh, best bakehouse scoreboard, which shows us that uh, Channel 7749 defeating the Ruse 4529. Uh, Declan Brett with three goals, Fletcher Murray with three goals, and one to Jordan Sculthorpe. Jude Archer three and one to Billy Stop, but uh, well, that was an arm wrestle, Brad Sculthorpe. 
until the last half of the last quarter when the prime movers for Channel really stamped their authority on the game. Yeah, they certainly did. They finished off the game well. They ran it out, which is great to see. Um, but, uh, yeah, the boys were, were always on the ball and Clarence were going to keep coming all, all game. Well, mate, we thank you so much for joining you, us here in the uh, commentary tower. As the This is one of the things I, I love about a combative sport. You come out here and uh, give it your best, and then you shake hands, and uh, everyone uh, is mates again. As here come the channel, they are racing off, and I know you'll hear a lot of people give them rousing applause of congratulations for their big victory. So... Uh, that's it for the under-13s. We're going to take a short break, and uh, it's the under-15s next. And in that match, we are going to see uh, Channel up against Sandy Bay. Uh, and so don't go too far. Now's your time to go and get your cup of tea, and we'll be back with the under-15s very shortly.